Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. And today I'd like to show you something from the other side of affordable. You know, usually I'm showing you watches that are under 500 or under 200. Uh, almost everything we sell is under 500, but we do have watches that reach up to one, two, and even one that comes really close to three grand. I wanted to show you watches from the other end of the price spectrum, at the higher end of what we sell. And the point in doing this is, you know, I always say that watches that we sell that are two, three hundred dollars, if it was in a, a better known brand, it would easily be a thousand dollars. So I have some watches here to show you, four of them in particular, that if they were in known brands, and a lot of them, their clones basically are in known brands, they're far, far more expensive. Even though I like to say that we have affordable watches, uh, maybe these aren't affordable to everybody, but they're still affordable in the sense that you do get a lot uh, for the money that you spend. You know, you're not spending $100 and getting an automatic. You're spending, you know, 2000 and getting an automatic. But there's a lot more engineering in it and there's a lot more in the design. And, and I hope that that qualifies for, you know, still being affordable and offering something that you don't get at other places. Um, I'll do my wrist check and then I'll show you a couple things that I'm going to show you. Uh, an Elise Open Heart. Uh, you may have seen this watch in some other videos that I did, uh, some other collaborations. This was basically one of the first watches I ever sold, uh, going back over a decade ago. And uh, because I'm doing expensive watches, I figured I'd wear my Yachtmaster. It's kind of like a, uh, a nod to the expensive watches. Uh, but believe it or not, I know, you know a lot of people say, oh my God, so expensive, so expensive. In the realm of wristwatches, uh, it's a drop in the hat. Uh, if you pick up some of these magazines, you regularly see watches that are a quarter million, $300,000. I'm not talking vintage pieces. I'm talking you know some real nice production pieces. Years ago, and I'm going to get off track, but I, thought, I just thought about this now. Years ago, I was on a plane coming back from Vegas, uh, from a jewelry show, and the guy next to me was a manager for De Bethune, which is an extremely high-end wristwatch manufacturer. He goes, "Oh yeah, I have one of the watches right here," and he opens up his he opens up his little case. I was carrying his notebook in, and there's a forty-five thousand dollar watch just jump jumping around in the little plastic bag. So <laughs> it's just you know it's it's different things to everybody, I guess. Uh, two of the watches I'm going to show you today, just to get a feel for it. Uh, this awesome Marathon Caesar and uh, a Diavis Shadow. And I own a sister watch to this, the Reaper, uh, for many years, which I love. But like I said, I got four pieces. I got two more on the table to show you. We'll put each one in front of the camera. We'll turn them around, check them out. Uh, and you can see what these brands have to offer at the, you know, they offer brand, they offer watches at the lower end of the spectrum. And maybe you can check out what they offer at the higher end of the spectrum to see how encompassing they all are. So I'm stop talking and we'll get over there. So in front of you here, I have four watches from four uh, very different manufacturers. I have something from Diavis, which is German, Laco, which is German, Marathon, which is Swiss, and Graf Zeppelin, uh, which is also a German company. They're all known for making different types of watches. Diavis makes a lot of tactical watches. Laco is mostly known for making the pilot's watches. Marathon, your military style watches. And then Graf Zeppelin is known for making a more refined aviators watch I like them they have a a vintage feel to them even though they're all modern pieces so I'm going to start with the piece right in front of you as I said all of these are going to be towards the higher end of the price scale so this Diavis it's called the shadow it comes in at around sixteen hundred dollars so we'll go through the specs and then we'll flip the watch around a little bit and you'll be able to get a a better look at it so inside Inside, it is using an ETA 2824 movement. You can see that the case itself is a decent size. It is 45 millimeters in diameter. It is 14 and a half millimeters thick. You see it's got a little bit of a dome to it. And tip to tip, from here to here, it is 54 millimeters. It is 500 meters water resistant, which is uh, you know generally higher than what we talk about. We usually talk about you know, 100 to 200 meters. It is a sapphire anti-reflective, anti-glare crystal, which is good because the crystal is kind of domed. So you can see it picks up the studio light. And then if I hold it up, it, it is going to pick up a lot of reflection. Uh, but it is anti-reflective, which means it's actually a lot better than it normally would be. Uh, it's cutting a lot of those things out. So the first thing you notice about the watch is definitely, 
I think, the, the black and yellow scheme going on. Years ago, there was a lot of these phantom watches where everything was black. And this was kind of born out of it, but then a splash of color was given. And I really dig it. They use... You know, they use that bright yellow, but then they use a couple of different shades of black, believe it or not, or, or dark gray. I guess there's only one black, right? But, but a bunch of different shades for the numerals that you can see it, the 3, 6, 9, and 12, the writing at the bottom of the dial. Uh, and then the bezel is done with the matching yellow. I like what they did with the, the 12 o'clock triangle. Half the triangle is on the bezel. Half the triangle is on the dial, so when it's lined up, it does appear, it does appear complete. It is a 60-click bezel. A very nice one at that and the entire case is done in this is done in this uh, DLC type finish this is what's known as uh, Diava 6 steel finish and it is one of those finishes that you could attack with a knife bang around uh, there are videos online that show it and it does not scratch the case back is solid screw down made in Germany is proudly set on the back the 50 atmosphere is water resistant and then like I said that 6 steel that six steel moniker that tells you the kind of finish of the watch. The watch used to come on a nice rubber strap, but they seem to have changed direction recently. Uh, I think it's probably to get the price of the watch down another 100, 150 bucks because the strap was expensive with the clasp. It comes now on this, you know, thick black leather with black stitching and a blackout buckle. All in all, a very nice watch. Yeah, helium escape valve for for uh, you know deep sea diving. You know, you can just tell by looking at it that it's really, it's meant, it's meant for business. It's uh, a mean looking watch. It's reminiscent of a Kobold or one of those other, uh, Damasco, one of those other types of watches. Uh, coming in though, you know, a fraction of the price that a Kobold would at uh, 1600 So maybe it's not affordable to you, but compared to uh, what you're getting, it does represent a pretty good deal. I will do a quick loom shot of the watch and you can see everything glows great. The bezel glows. The markers glow very well. The hands, I mean, the hand, those hands are just wild. I own a Diavis Reaper. This is the Shadow. I own a Reaper, which was a 50-piece limited edition, which is very similar. It's just a little bit smaller, uh, and I love it. It's that yellow on black scheme. So it really, really, it pops in the daylight, and it pops in the nighttime. So now we'll switch gears and go to another German manufacturer. Here is a Graf Zeppelin watch, uh, this 100-year anniversary watch. And it is an automatic chronograph or a mechanical chronograph, as you can tell from the subdials at the nine o'clock position. Uh, the second subdial, it's running with that smooth consistency. The crown, you could hear it whine. So this is powered. Uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's get into the size specs. So the watch is 42 millimeters in diameter. It is 16 millimeters thick. The Valjou uh, movement that's in it is not a thin movement at all. Lug tip to lug tip comes in at 48 millimeters. So not an overly large watch. You might be pushing the limits for a dress watch, but you know if you want this kind of a heart inside, you do need you do need a larger case. So this is the Valjou 7753 automatic chronograph movement. Uh, it's similar to the 7750, which is in the, is on that marathon you can see in the back. Uh, it's a little bit different. No day, date only. Date is funk is uh, actuated or quick advanced by this button over here. If you can see the date going advancing, uh, so that is the quick change for the date. Thus, the third button. But the chronograph is a simple start. You can see the big seconds hand is running. You have a 30-minute scale and 12-hour scale down here. Stop and a reset. And because it's a mechanical chronograph, it is a very very hard click you can you can hear it and you definitely feel it it is another sapphire crystal watch it's got a screw down back with an exhibition window so you can see that Valjou movement and it's you know it's not void of finishing it's got decent uh, perlage and you can see the the round dots when the tools come down to finish out the movement and just just a really Really classy watch. This one comes in at right around two thousand dollars. So again, we are we're not really talking about affordables here. Although you know, a watch of this class in a very known brand is easily a lot more money. 
22 millimeter strap. I believe the uh, shadow was as well. I didn't mention it. So it's a 22 millimeter strap. Water resistance here, since it's a dress, a dress watch, is going to be right around 50 meters. Uh, but you can see it's just a great looking watch on this black strap with the, with the white stitching. It's a super thick strap too. It gets really thick near the near the watch, which is good because it really matches the character of the piece. The dial itself is this off-whitish kind of silver. It's got some it's got some depth and texture to it. If I you know turn on an angle, you can see it. It's got these Breguet style hands. No luminescence. This is a dress watch. It has a telemeter and a tachometer function on the on the outside of the um, dial. And if you need to know what that is, you can look at our video, uh, one of our watch and learns we discussed that. And something that is, as I was moving around, I felt it, you know, this, the Valjoux movement is a unidirectional winding movement. It means the rotor only winds the movement in one direction. So what that means is that there are times when if you jolt the watch, you will actually get the rotor to free to freewheel. And we'll see if we can do it. See that? It's not actually winding the watch. It's just spinning. Because in one direction, it winds. In one direction, it just freewheels. So just because a, a, a movement is unidirectional doesn't mean it's a garbagey movement. Uh, so that's the Zeppelin. We'll move on now. We'll go back to a tactical feel, and we'll pick up the Laco. So this is the Laco Squad Ocean 1,000-meter dive watch, model 861704. I'm not doing good with my, with my model numbers. This guy was a 7618-1, and the other one before was a shadow. It doesn't have a number to it. Uh, so this is the Laco Ocean, number 861704. And now this is a real heavy-duty diver. This is a 1,000-meter dive watch, complete again with a helium escape valve, solid screw down back. It's got an, a, a Laco 24 movement, which is an ETA 2824. The case is 45 millimeters in diameter. The thickness is 17 millimeters. And the overall tip-to-tip -tip is right around 55 millimeters. So this thing is big. The 22 millimeter lug with screwed with screwed lug bars for this nice real wave pattern dive strap that will definitely be extremely comfortable. Uh, it is this blasted stainless steel case. The bezel, wow, it's like a marathon bezel. It really, you can hear it, you can feel it. It just clinks right into place dead on. Very, very well done. So this watch was developed in collaboration uh, with the German army to their specifications. That's why it looks so military-like and so tactical. It has that nice feel to it. You know, the screw down crown. You see this, the crown's out. I was winding it. Uh, it's really, really a great looking watch. Uh, of course, you have a sapphire crystal. It's a dome sapphire. It comes in a pelican case in one of those nice uh, plastic briefcases. You know, th this is serious business. This one is uh, around 1500 and they do make it in the Seven Seas version, which is the same thing, just PVD'd. It's all black, and that's around $100 more. And then right on the back, you know, made in Germany, written in German, uh, and sapphire glass. 100 atmospheres water resistant. That is not a typo. And this is a watch that when they put a, you know, 100, excuse me, when they put 1,000 meters on the dial or 100 atmospheres, you know they mean it. You can tell just by holding it. Luminescence, obviously, glows awesome, even in my not dark studio. I mean, just look how bright that is. It glows extremely, extremely well. And then we're going to finish it up with one more tactical watch, and it's the Marathon. So here is the Marathon. This is the CSAR, C-S-A-R, Chronograph Search and Rescue. So let's go through the specs. First, the price. This is the most expensive one of the bunch, coming in a hair under $3,000. Uh, it is a 46-millimeter case. That's without the crown. It's a whopping 18 millimeters thick. And tip to tip, it's a 55-millimeter just like the Laco, the uh, Ocean that I, that I showed you a minute ago. So this now uses the Valjoux 7750 movement, which was very similar to the Zeppelin that I showed you, this one had the subdials arranged at the 3, 6, and 9. This one does it at the 6, 9, and 12. This is the original 7750, but obviously no see-through case back here because this is a serious diving watch. So this is an automatic chronograph. We drop the pusher up here. It's integrated into the crown to change the day and the date. 
and to activate the chrono we use the pushers. But these are pushed are screw down buttons. So to use the screw down buttons, first thing you actually have to do, because you never do this underwater, is unscrew the button, activate it, and there goes the second hand. And it's got the 30 minute counter at the top and the 12 hour counter at the bottom. Stop it, and then you want to reset it. And you would unscrew the button and reset it. Then you screw them back down when you're done. And that prevents against accidental actuation when you're underwater. Because at full depth, uh, it's not going to maintain water resistance if you if you work the buttons. It's a, another anti-reflective sapphire crystal, 22 millimeter lug width, this nice vulcanized rubber strap, signed buckle. I mean, this thing's a, <laughs> it's a lead weight. Look at that. I mean, it's really bulky. Uh, that we do have a matching bracelet for this, and the bracelet probably makes the watch, you know, maybe over half a pound or three quarters of a pound. It's crazy. Uh, it's really, really heavy duty. So being a marathon, of course, it's got the tritium lights. If you look closely at the hands, you'll see there's tubes on the hands, and there's tubes on the dial around the periphery, and that is active luminescence. Uh, it does not need to be charged. They glow uh, through a little bit of a radi radioactivity. And the tubes last for about 10 to 20 years, uh, and they will remain visible without exposure to a light source. So you can see they glow. It doesn't glow like a flashlight. You know, sometimes in some of the advertisements for tritium lights, it looks like they glow, glow like flashlights. They do not, but they glow steady and they do not fade. And just as a comparison, you know, look at the Laco. Look how bright it is, and look at the Marathon. Not as bright. Uh, but if we sat here for 20 minutes, the Laco would be dimmer than uh, the Marathon. I did do a video on tritium illumination and what it is and comparing it to, uh, I believe it was Superluminova, which is the Seiko compound. You know, maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll try to link to it down below. And you can see I do to both watches side by side. So you can see what, uh, the, what the active versus passive illumination looks like over time. Uh, but definitely remains legible over time. And this is just a serious, serious dive watch, you know, with <laughs> with a chronograph built in. And that bezel. This one's a 120 click. Just you hear it, you feel it, you know what it's like. And that is just solid, 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 dead on. Um, wor works like a champ. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you a couple of pieces from this door that really touch the upper price points of what we sell. You do get an enormous amount for your money, whether it be a movement or German manufacturer, Swiss manufacturer. Uh, you know, you, you still get far more than you do in other better known brands for the same amount of money. And, and that's what I really like about them. If you like this video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.